Come on, put your hands together. Amen. We're having a segmented praise. Amen. Service. Um, we're going to uh, request that uh, Pastor uh, Morrison, uh, otherwise affectionately known as Aunt Liz, prepare herself uh, 15 minutes on uh, the subject matter that she's speaking on today. But while she's preparing herself in this segment, we have a, a couple people give a testimony, and then we're going to ask the praise team come back in the next segment. Sister Stephanie Morton be leaving us, lead, leading the song. And in the third segment, Dr. Valerie Butler. So at this time, you have a testimony. You have an opportunity to stand up, amen, and give God the praise. In fact, we're going to ask you to come up here to the front with your testimony, starting with Elder Reed, because everybody else seems to be kind of slow this morning. And you got to have your testimony ready. you got to always be ready to tell people what God has done for you. Thank you. Yesterday, my uh, uh, daughter and her husband took me to Ark Encounter. They came down from Michigan Friday and stayed overnight and then took me there. Uh, it was for our mutual birthday. My daughter's was, daughter's was last week. Mine, I'll be 74 April 14th. That's, that's a testimony right there. <laughs> A year and a half ago, you would have had to put me in a wheelchair. I had been in the hospital three times with AFib, and uh, then one time they had my uh, pulse so slow that my kidney was breaking down. And, uh, I mean, it was only 15 days total, but even though you get up and walk around, it still takes a lot off of you, especially when you get up old, in your 60s. Anyway... I did use my the wheel walker. It's got a seat. I did use that. But praise the Lord, I was able to do the, the ark encounter. Amen. We didn't go in every little room, but we made it all the way through the ark. Amen. Only by the grace of God. Amen. I mow my own lawn. Amen. Plus the backyard next door. And I've even done this one once. I only live two and a half blocks away, so I can just walk it over here. And uh, I, I just thought they was getting too slow, so <laughs> I came over and I didn't even tell anybody. <laughs> I, I, the only person that even found out, you didn't even know, did you? <laughs> so anyway, he, he's given me the strength to continue. And it's been a, such a blessing through the pandemic because even though I had to stay home, home included a very large piece of property where I could get outside, pull weeds, and do whatever I wanted to do. Holler at the neighbors from a distance. And I do have fantastic neighbors. So I, I'm just so blessed I don't even know how to say. In Jesus' name. Uh, during this segment, uh, before we, uh, our first speaker will come forth on this Celebration Day, Resurrection Sunday, uh, the world commercially call it Easter Sunday, and they lift up the, the Easter bunny, but the, the real meaning of Easter is that Jesus died and he rose from the grave, and we're here to give him praise, amen, God is great and he's greatly to be praised, we're going to have one more uh, testimony in this segment, um, while they're doing that, come on up, uh, 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 Sister Margie. Amen. Praise the Lord, Church. I've been dealing with arthritis for a long, very long time, and it's a crippling arthritis. I have it in my hands, in my knees, my hip. But one thing about it, God knows all and help all. I can even walk to church and I live around the corner. But I thank God for his healing power that I'm here and I do have heels on. So I thank God for all his mercy, mercy and grace, and God 
because I could not get out of the bed without my husband helping me out of the bed. I was in so much pain. I still have some pain now, but it's nothing like it was. And I always give all the credit to the people that prayed for me and for the Almighty God for helping me to be able to walk and come and get through this because it's just something that the devil tried to put upon you, especially when you're studying the word. Every time I study the word, the devil tries to say something, and I ask the Lord to please rebuke him in Jesus' name so I can go on with my studies and get stronger in the Lord. And that's my goal is to go stronger, not backwards. And I will determine, I am determined to go, go stronger with the Lord. If the devil tries to intervene, all I have to do is say, Jesus, he flee. Yeah. So I learned that from my sister many years ago and from the pastor now. And I th thank God that I'm here. Like I said, here today, I talked to the pastor uh, through the week and told him, he asked me, how was I doing? I told him, I said, I'm still cramped up. My fingers won't straighten out. He said, we'll be praying. I said, okay, pastor. And I was praying and I'm reading the word. But like I said, again, I am here. Yeah. I'm not walking really good, but I'm walking. I don't have to be, I didn't have to walk. I didn't have to have my hand move my hands, but the grace of God, I'm moving my hands, and I'm a witness that anything's going on, God will overcome it. Just believe and have your faith. Yes. And I thank the Lord my niece is here, Glenda. Amen. 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 We are certainly happy to see Deaconess Spates in the house. It's been a whole year, and we miss you. And uh, her husband transitioned uh, last year, uh, and just be as the pandemic was starting, and uh, we, we really, pre we've been praying for you, and um, we're, we're glad that God is helping you to make it through in these difficult times. At this time, we're going to call uh, our first lady, co-pastor, Belinda Buchanan. She's going to come and give a welcome, after which uh, first lady Paige is going to come and give us a response. Let's receive... Co-pastor Belinda Buchanan at this time. Put your hands together and give God the praise. Amen. We want to thank the Lord for all his many blessings he has restored upon us. We want to thank the Lord for just blessing us to be in the land of the living. For we know that there was a lot of people that didn't make it uh, from last year and part of this year. But well, we want to thank the Lord that we're breathing. We're not on ventilators. We're not in the ICUs. We're not in the hospitals. Everybody should be standing on that. Amen. You're not having difficulty breathing. Come on. Come on. Put your hands together. Give God the praise. He's worthy. Just want to let everybody know that you're welcome and you're home. And we want to thank the Lord for our speakers. We want to thank the Lord for uh, uh, past Minister Page, uh, Pastor Jones, uh, Pastor uh, Elizabeth Morrison. We want to thank the Lord for all of our visitors, First Lady Page, First Lady uh, Jones. We want to thank the Lord for each and every one. Thank the Lord for Brother Eddie and uh, Pastor Jones' brother. I forgot his name. Marvin. Marvin, that's it. I got it. We want to thank the Lord for all of our visitors, and we want to let you know that you... Everybody over here, I'm missing some names, but it's, it's all good. We want to thank Lord for Deacon in Space. Being here, it's been a while since she hadn't been here because in the passing of Elder George Space, her husband, we want to thank Lord that he gave her added strength, her grandbaby being here as well. Each and every last one of you, we want to thank the Lord for everybody being here, uh, my nephews being here, amen, cousins, everybody. Thank the Lord for each and every last uh, one of you. And happy Easter to everybody in your home, so you're welcome to come here anytime you want to. Thank you so much. Love you, and God bless. At this time, I turn this portion of service over to the hands of First Lady Paige. See her with hearty praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen.
Amen. We thank and praise the Lord for uh, co-pastor with the welcome and pastor first lady Paige uh, with the response. And we certainly thank God for our husband, Pastor Paige, uh, being in the house and all the pastors that are here. We got one more that will be coming um, has made a sacrifice this morning. Put your hands together for the pastors that are here this morning. Amen. At this time, uh, we're going to go ahead and remember, we're, uh, we're going to call on um, uh, testimonies from Pastor Page Church, from Pastor Jones Church, and from Pastor Lewis's church and Pastor Morrison's church to get their testimony here today. So you got chance, you have a chance to prepare for the next segment. Amen. So uh, at this time, uh, I would introduce the speaker, but we have somebody here present that is certainly more qualified to introduce that our speaker, and that is her son. At her request, we're going to ask uh, Brother Mayo if he will come up, amen, and introduce his pastor and his mother to the assembly today. Let's receive him with a hearty praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, happy Easter, you guys. Can I give one more praise, one more hand clap for the Lord? Can we get a hand clap for the Lord? Introducing to you my mother, my pastor, Elizabeth Morrison. Can we have one more hand clap? Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I thought this was a celebrate. Didn't somebody say this was a celebrate? such a legacy. A legacy that could continue the work. And we are grateful for my brother-in-law, Pastor Anthony Buchanan, and my sister, my elder sister. I know you can't tell that by the looks. She's so beautiful, and I'm not just joking. I remember being young and I used to say, one of these days I'm going to be able to quote the scriptures like you do. She used to be able to go from one chapter, and I know she's still able. I ain't, they still ain't able to do what you did then. I don't have the memory she has, but we have the legacy. And I won't hold you long. I know I got 15 minutes and. I thank God for my auntie being in the house today. Amen. Sister Margie, it's blessed to see you. I thank God for Apostle. Thank you for being in the house today. I'm sure we have an evangelist in the house. Prophets, teachers. We're blessed to have the fivefold represented in the house of God today. Uh, I bless God for my children, all three of them, Brittany, Mayo, you did a fabulous job, son. 
and my youngest son, Melchizedek. We honor every one of you from pursuing word ministries. We thank God for Sister Sanders been in the house. God bless you. You know I wouldn't dare say nothing without saying it's good to see you, bro. Sam, my brother, it's good to see you. Okay, this is home, but, 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 but we won't get sidetracked because there is a word from the Lord. And I was sent on assignment. And I know you, some of you may think that, uh, and I know this is an apostolic ministry. I know you may think that's uh, uh, something about a denomination, but no, we're, we're here because we're sent. We have been sent on a call that no one else could have called us but God himself called us. And my assignment was one of St. John chapter 19 and verse 28. St. John 19 and 28, that was my assignment. And that's how it was put, why we have been sent to declare the truth of his word. And the Bible reads, says, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Is anybody thirsty? I thirst. And I know that there's many uh, different angles or perspectives in which why Jesus said, I thirst. But I would just simply like to focus on his humanity of being thirsty. That's what I like to focus on. Jesus was given an assignment from his father to go and declare the truth of his word, to speak the gospel. And I don't know how many of you work in the uh, medical field, but I had my share in time there. And I must admit that there were many times when I worked with an individual right before their death, they became thirsty. And they, their lips were dry, and sometimes all we could give them was a little sponge with some water on it. Some were able to do ice cubes or something like that. But I asked the Lord, what, what is it that you want us to know? And many of us have already said that we have known and seen many of our loved ones in this season alone that have gone on before us. They're no longer here. And so we're left with memories, good and some bad. But we have here Jesus the Christ. Jesus the Christ went uh, from judgment hall to judgment hall. He was beat up and, and attacked, basically. Spit on. Crown of thorns oppressed on his head. Even to the point of gambling on the road that was given to him. But I believe to say today that he was thirsty because he was approaching death. A thirst simply signifies that it's almost over. You know when you go through so much and many things in life. Uh, somewhere along the line, we realize that we're just not here just to be here. Your life and my life, it means something. And we're not here just passing time and, and twiddling our fingers. 
dealers and trying to get the biggest house and the finest cars. But when we've lived just a little bit and we went through some trials and tribulation, we understand I'm living with purpose. And the Christ, he said to his mother, I must be about my father's business. So we know John here, he comes from a perspective. He comes from a perspective of one that was the close one to the Christ. We've heard in his writings that John said, I am John, the one that Jesus loved. So he came from a perspective that nobody else did. Matthew, Mark, Luke. They, 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 they couldn't see from the same perspective. But he said, I'm the one that Jesus loves. The word of the Lord lets us know after this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. So we know in the word of the Lord that the word of the Lord lets us know in the book of Psalm that his death was described in such a way saying, my life is poured out like water. And all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. He said, it's melting within me. My strength is trod up like some baked clay. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth, and you have laid me in the dust and left me for dead. I don't know about you, but I'm willing to die empty. I don't want it to be said that I didn't finish my course. I don't want it to be said I didn't finish what God has set me out to do. And this message here is, a, is, 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 is somewhat very emotional for me because I don't know about you, but any of you know the lady, my mother, Pastor Bertha Ann Morrison. She labored and she did the work of the ministry. She went day and night, sometimes with no sleep. She would preach her heart out right here on these floors. And she would preach the truth of his word and she would turn around and leave and drive two hours longer and go up into Horse Cave, Kentucky and preach the word of the Lord. See, she was on a mission. And here, right here today, Christ was on his mission. We know in Matthew and Mark that they said that when he thirsted, in other words, they offered him some vinegar mixed with gall or mixed with mirth. But we all know that mixture was in order to take the pain away. The scripture said he wouldn't receive that. Uh, I know that I'm not the only one that drunk in my day. And a lot of times the reason we get what you call stinking drunk is because we're going through some pain we want to forget about. We don't want to hurt no more. So we call ourselves drinking our sorrows away. Yes, I am I right? But no, no, this is not the type of thirsty that Christ was. He said, I thirst. In other words, I've been through for you, for you and for you. I took the stripes on my back. I took it for your healing. He 
said, in other words, I've carried my cross. And I'm almost finished. This is the reason why I'm thirsty. We know, in other words, that when we go through things in life and God has set us out to do a work, we've got to finish that work. No matter who talks about us, no matter who holds our past up against us, the work must be done. But this is reality. Some of us don't want to go through the suffering. But I heard a writer said, I will offer God nothing that won't cost me something. So John said that they gave him straight vinegar. And vinegar is what he receives. And we know that vinegar is a type of, of drink that we can drink that can detoxify us. Flesh out anything that, that, that's not good in the body. But the word of the Lord lets me know today that being thirsty as he was was simply saying, I am almost finished. We all know that the days of man is short and it's full of troubles. Who can know it? You didn't go through that breakup. For nothing. You didn't lose that loved one for nothing. You didn't feel the sickness that you went through for nothing. Glory be to God. You was not abused for nothing. Let me talk to somebody that's went through some experiences in life. You went through because that was the making of the ministry that God has for your life. After the scriptures were fulfilled, after he did what he was sent to do, he said, I thirst. I want you to understand today that your work will not be complete until you finish what he has called for you and me to do. And I know this is a day to celebrate. And many of us have celebrated the Feast of Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and here we're celebrating with you the resurrection of our Christ. But the question is, are you thirsty yet? Do you feel a sense of having to drink something? If you don't have that thirst, this type of thirst yet, that means you got work to do. In order for us to do that work, we have to get out, out of our traditional mindsets. It's a must. We've got to be willing to walk in the gifts that God has given us to complete the task. And those gifts does not look like what clothes you got on, how you dressed. So far from that. You know what it really looks like? It looks like God has gifted me. He has given me the gift of love, the gift of evangelism. The gift of prophecy. He has given me the gift of singing. The gift of music. The gift of forgiveness. 
If you haven't forgiven that one person that took your innocence, you're not thirsty yet. If you haven't forgiven the one that murdered, you're not thirsty yet. He said, I thirst because I am almost finished. The same way mother's work ended, your work and my work will end too. But if it's going to end, let's end empty. Let's end with the thirst. Let's end Empty, given all we have, given all that he's given to us, and die empty. Don't take no mixture with it. Don't try to take away the pain. Embrace everything that's happened in your life, in your past. Embrace it. In fact, own that. It happened for a reason. You're not dead. You're alive, you're a living testimony, die empty. You're not thirsty yet. We're not thirsty yet. Because our work is not finished. Put your hands together one more time. Jesus said, I thirst. One of the last sevens of Jesus Christ. We thank God for that uh, impactful message from Pastor Morrison. At this time, we're going to call our praise team back. Amen. And uh, we're going to ask uh, Sister Stephanie to lead us in this segment, a song, after which we'll get uh, possibly two testimonies in this segment. Amen. Let's receive Sister Stephanie. Amen. And Dr. Butler on the praise team. Well, again, with a hearty praise the Lord. Amen. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The
test of pain just now. Just come up and give us a quick testimony. Amen. Here's the other one. Everyone, hearty praise the Lord. I'm Deaconess Kayla Chenault, and this is my mother of uh, First Lady Paige and uh, Pastor Paige. On the behalf of uh, Healing Water Ministry, we want to thank you for having us and for uh, thanking God for allowing us to see another time, uh, uh, another day, and we're having a great time, so thank you very much. <laughs> And put your hands together and give God the praise. Amen. One more burning tech testimony in this segment. Who will be the next? Uh, come on up, please. Praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Sharice McGee. I want to give honor first to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to uh, give honor to my pastor, Paige, and First Lady Page, Healing Waters Ministry, and all the prophetess, evangelists, apostles, preachers, ministers, evangelists, teachers, and everybody in all their rightful places. Um, testimony I want to give today is a testimony I've never spoke with anyone. And God laid it on my heart today because he said, you're ready. About six years ago, um, I lost a daughter to my ex-husband. And we've been struggling with the healing process with that. When, when it happened, you know, I, I was in a dark place, a really, really dark place. And I felt like, how could I trust or love anyone else again? I got a call last week. And God has been speaking to me and dealing with, with me about what would you do if you see your ex-husband? And back then, it wouldn't have been good. But after going through so much depression and oppression, so much heartache, you know, even dealing with my daughter right here that was there when it happened, it hurts. But what God showed me is all this happened in Alabama. I was drinking myself to death. He picked me up off that floor, and he said, I got to get you in an uncomfortable place. Yes. He picked me up, and I got my child, and I came all the way to Kentucky by myself. Hey. By myself. Hey. I stopped drinking. Yes. I stopped smoking. Yes. I've had my ups and my downs. But my brother came. My sister came. He said, I will supply you with everything that you need. He support me with a ministry, with a pastor that loves me so much, that prayed for me so much, that when they called me last week and said, your trial is coming up, uh, he hasn't been convicted yet. It's been six years. I said, you do what you have to do, but he's already been forgiven by me. What a powerful testimony. And young lady... I think it's the first time I met you, but you're not the only person in here with a loss. I said, you're not the only person in here with a loss. That testimony was just reconfirming what everybody else with a loss has already been through. Put your hands together. Woo! Oh, I come to praise him. I come to praise him. We're about to We're about to go in Not unless y'all ready Now if y'all feel like praying I'll give you a few more minutes But you can't sit down One, two, three Put your hands up Y'all not ready 